imagine that you were told that you had less than a 25% chance, optimistically, of making it through the next 18 months. We went in to see my family doctor. He took one look at me and was dumbfounded that I hadn't come in sooner. He put me in the hospital that day. Uh, I was transferred to the to the cardiac center in Halifax at the VG in Halifax and, and um, consulted with the, the head of the cardiac transplant team there. And after about a month of testing and, and evaluations, he came in one day and said, look, you, you need a heart and two new lungs. You need them now uh, or you're probably not going to see your 25th birthday. And that's when the journey began. <laughs> So, not just a heart transplant, but the heart and both lungs. I just want to be clear. Um, but I, I got the surgery. Uh, I don't always found it in time. I was very, very fortunate. Uh, there were only two heart lung transplants done in the whole country that year. I was one of them. So, very, very lucky. Um, and then a whole new journey began. I mean, hey, as is the case with many things in life, I think, we have this goal that we're pursuing. We have this thing that we're going after. And then we get it and we realize... And now there's a new challenge right now. Now what? I, I did not know until later that, that people who go through traumatic surgeries and, and life and death things have, suffer a kind of PTSD. Okay. Uh, certainly not, certainly not the same as, as people who have been in the war. I, I wouldn't pretend to understand that, but uh, I didn't, you know, I, I, th I assumed once I had the surgery, like everything's going to, if it goes well, everything's going to be great, right? I'm healthy. I'm, I'm good. And it was about three weeks post surgery. Uh, and everything was medically going as well as it could go. I mean, I was already back home, uh, back home in Toronto, but out of the hospital, um, doing well, the lungs are working, everything's going great. And, and I felt emotionally dead. I was exhausted. Um, I was empty. I was hopeless. Um, and I didn't know why. I'm, I'm really curious. How did you, what did you grab onto? What were your stepping stones to find your way through that journey of healing that emotional pain? Well, I mean, first I think it was to, it was admitting that, that something was there. Uh, I was, I think fairly typical as a young man who, um, who loved, you know, that idea of individual, individuality and the idea of the self-made man and the idea that I didn't need anybody else's help. Thank you very much. Um, and certainly that wasn't weak and I didn't need help or counseling or any of that stuff. Um, and then I found myself in a doctor's office crying and I didn't know why. And I had to, to, I guess, be humble enough to say, I can't do this on my own. I don't know what's wrong with me, but I need your help. I need you to, you know, something's not working here so I think that was the first step is just to say hey like help me tell me what's wrong tell me what I need to do um and for me and again you know everybody's different for me it was um I did meet with a counselor several times uh the the, the transplant team actually has a psychologist as part of the team because they know this it's a pretty common thing for people to, to have issues both pre and post transplant because you're you know dealing with life and death and it's it's intense um and for me, medication was part of the process. Um, and that was tough. Uh, taking the medication, admitting that I needed it was tough. Because again, I, I, I was not somebody who needed that. I was not a depressed person. I didn't, I, you, I don't need pills. Um, but, uh, you know, the doctor said, look, you, you're taking all of these other medications to make your body work properly. What's wrong with taking a pill to make your brain work properly? Uh, and that, I guess that logic was enough to well, give, allow me to give myself the permission to say, okay, what's, what's one more pill? I'm already taking 20 of them every day anyway. Um, so the combination of those two things helped me kind of get out of the, the fog enough, I guess, to find some emotional energy to then start working through um, what I had been through and where I was going.